When someone places an order in Shopify, that triggers an orders create webhook. In this demo, I take that webhook and turn it into a live notification in the storefront using WebSockets via a service called Ably. It's a simple example of how backend events can drive real-time UI and help customers see which products are popular right now. Okay, so let's look at a demo in action. Over in the left pane, we've got the Hooktake dashboard. Uh, we've got an event gateway project and we can see we're in the events view. I've got two tabs in line here, both with my development app, hookdeck-dev.myshopify.com. So you can see I've already got the snow effect that's in place. If I now have a look at an item, add it to the cart, let's check out because I'm interested in buying this. I'm going to add my name. Oh, we need to card number one because I'm in development mode. That will succeed. Uh, any security code will be fine. So now if I make that payment, what this does, this triggers a webhook from Shopify in order to create a webhook. It's received by our application. Uh, that event is then pushed to Ably and then Ably will deliver it to the, the browser, as you saw that notification come in and we've got that side pop out and we also got the snowflake effect. So we do that once more, make another purchase. Let's still go with a mug. It's the cart should just buy now. Check out another random address. Again, successful payment. Trigger the payment. Again, webhook via hook deck to our application. Application again via hook deck as a queue to Ably. Then Ably is delivering that event into the UI. We're getting the notification and we're getting the snowflake effect. So, how does that work? Within the ReadB, you'll see this flow or sequence diagram. Um, I've kind of talked through it there anyway, but, but the details are that again, we, the, the user creates an order by placing the order on the, within the application. It makes a post request for the orders create, which has been registered, um, which is received by the hook event gateway to, to guarantee reliable ingestion of those events. It's then delivered to our remix application. In this case, I'm running the application locally. So I'm using the hook CLI to proxy those events from the cloud or the, uh, the hook event gateway deployed to the cloud to my local device. I then do a transformation on a payload because I don't want to send PII information, this you know, personal information, personal identifiable information. Um, and then I'm making a call to the publish API within the hook deck event gateway for a separate queue, another queue. So one queue to receive, another queue to, to send, which queues events up to Ably. Um, and then Ably has got a persistent WebSocket connection from its platform through to the UI, the browser UI, and then it's delivering that real-time notification, which is shown both as the, the kind of UI pop-out, but also the snowflake. You might ask why I'm putting hook deck in the middle in both these situations, both for the managing the inbound webhook and also queuing the event through to Ably because Obviously you could just receive the event directly in your application. Um, you could use say the Clevler tunnel during development and then just do it directly in production. And also from your application, you could just call Ably's API directly. So I think there are four reasons why you would want to put hook deck in the middle of both the inbound and the outbound requests. Firstly, you're getting that reliable ingestion of events from Shopify. Um, the hook deck event gateway will instantly acknowledge that that request that webhook and deliver it to your application on the outbound side of things you're queuing events up to ably so you, you're avoiding any uh, throttling or like you know managing the 49 requests you see you're queuing those events up to be then delivered to ably and then ultimately to the browser 
Thirdly, you're getting observability. So I'm seeing both the events coming in from Shopify and the events going out to Ably in a, a centralized place with you know decent UI and uh, debugging capabilities. And the fourth one is the very much around that tooling that we can have the same environment and development experience, both in development, but also in production. So here we can see a bunch of events, but let me start with requests. So what the hook to event gateway has is HTTP requests come in, in this case, they're, they're webhooks or their requests to send events to Ably. We've got the Shopify webhooks source, and we've got the Shopify notifications uh, publish source. If I go into my connections view, let me pop this out in its, into its own tab so we can see it much better. So here we've got the Shopify webhook source. This is uh, of type Shopify. We can also see this little icon, which means it's authenticating that the events are coming from Shopify. We've also got this Shopify notifications publish source. Um, we can see it's of type publish API, so it has to be authenticated for us to be able to publish events. We've got here just delivering to our CLI at the minute, these order create events, and we've got this other destination, which is Ably REST API. So here we can see specific requests coming in to say the Shopify webhooks source. We can view those. We can see the payloads, we can see the headers. And then what happens is if a source, these things over on the left are part of a connection, with a destination, then an event is generated within hook deck. So now we've got these different events. And with these events, now, if I move this back into this tab group, during development, this gives me the ability to kind of retry, say, I just want to retry the, the publish event that goes to Ably. I can click the little retry button and we'll see in both these tabs here that I'm getting that retry event, uh, that, that purchase notification in again. I can also test end to end. So instead of doing, using the Shopify CLI and doing Shopify app webhooks trigger or going through this purchase process of, you know, within the dev UI creating the purchase. So I can retry them end to end here, which has the same as the just the notification side of things. But if I go into my development environment, I can also see that my application is logging the information. So I'm writing some logic. I can change the logic and retry the event. And I can also see them in the hook deck CLI. So actually it's come to the hook deck CLI first, then it's gone to my application. And within the CLI, I can inspect and I can also retry events directly here. But if you want to dive into the code, the key pieces to, to be aware of are the webhooks order create handler. This ensures that the event in this case came from Shopify. So although it was received by the hooktech event gateway and then sent to our local application, we still keep all the credentials there. So you can still verify the payload. You could decide to also verify this came by hookdeck or just verify it came by hookdeck. However, there's some value in using this authenticate webhook um, function because you can get the topic, the shop, the admin, and so on. Uh, and then we call this publish order notification function. This transforms the payload within the application itself. So getting removing that PII information and then calls publish to, to hook deck. It's worthwhile pointing out that, that hook deck does actually support transformations. So within that connection from the publish source to the uh, Ably API, you could actually run a transformation to change the payload, but here we're deciding to do it within the, the Shopify application. And then we call publish to hook deck, which actually just makes a, an HTTP request to our publish API, identifying the source that we want to publish on. And it is authenticated using an API key. Then in the browser, there's a notifications.js that, that's run. It creates snowflakes and so on. Um, but some of the main things to kind of be aware of here are 
we're connected to Ably. The minute we've got this hard coded um, credentials, we might want to look at changing that. We've also got hard coded channel name. So it's uh, Shopify notifications. We're then subscribing on that channel. We're receiving that event, that, that PII free event, logging the information and then creating that notification, which shows the UI. Okay, so that's an overview of the, what I'm calling here Shopify Festive Real-Time Notifications demo. Obviously notifications as a pattern can help with engagement and doesn't have to be just applied to a uh, kind of festive theme. Again, the architecture here was reliably ingesting webhooks from Shopify using the Hooked Event Gateway, delivering to your application. Again, using the Hooked Deck tooling. So you've got the CLI to deliver on localhost. You can also use the same infrastructure in production. We're using a connection within the Hooked Deck Event Gateway as a queue to queue events through to Ably, and then Ably will deliver those events into the UI to show these notifications. As mentioned, all the codes on GitHub, there are links to both the Ably documentation, the Hook Deck Event Gateway documentation, and I'd love for you to get involved and contribute and think about other ways to, to use other webhooks from, from Shopify and, and build other experiences within a Shopify application.